At some point, our ancestors grew too much corn and they're like, hey, I wonder if I could trade this corn for beans. And the bean guy's like, hey, I got extra beans. I could use some of your corn. Yeah, yeah. Oh! Safe money. I do not feel no pressure, I just put it extra effort. I do not feel no pressure, I just put it extra effort. I do not feel no pressure, I just put it extra effort. I do not feel no pressure. Hey, look. Yo guys, what's up? It's your boy John Calder Ice Lawson. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Today, here's what I want to talk to you about. The first principle of business for me is all about commerce. So here's the thing, I'm gonna read this off, right? What is commerce? Commerce is the conduct of trading among economic agents. Generally, commerce refers to the exchange of goods, services, or something of value between businesses or entities. Okay, so that's a little bit, you know, that's like the, I don't know, book version. So let me give you my version. And the deal is I've had the opportunity to travel all around the world, literally hit every continent and set uh, except what the one that's frozen. I didn't go there. You know, maybe I will one day. I met a guy that actually did that. But at any rate, yeah, he walked across the freaking, you know, uh, Antarctica. What? I, I, I don't even understand what would drive a man to want to walk across a frozen tundra by themselves, dragging like 80 pounds of crap. I don't get it, but hey, he did it. So here's the deal though. Every place I've gone around the world, there's commerce, right? I don't care if you're going to major, major metropolitan areas, or if you go someplace small, tiny, and pretty third worldish. No matter where you go, there's a center of town somewhere where people will trade and exchange goods. Often it's just a market. You go to the center of town and there's a market. And at that market, people are selling goods to each other. And also what happens at that market is where people go and talk to each other. There's usually at least a coffee shop or something like that where you can get a drink, sit down and chill. It is the center of everything that happens in that community, right? So everywhere you go, there's always a center of town where commerce is being done. At some point, our ancestors grew too much corn and they're like, hey, I wonder if I could trade this corn for beans. And the bean guy's like, hey, I got extra beans. I could use some of your corn. That's commerce. Commerce is simply two people getting together making a trade and it is as old as human beings are and the cool thing is that anytime we create a community commerce begins to happen so what has happened with us in the world of social media social media is all about community right but at some point anytime a community gets together there's going to be that commerce and that's why social is all about commerce. Even though we think it's not, just the simple fact that we're all getting together means at some point, I'm gonna tell you about all this extra damn corn I got. And I'm like, hey, you got any beans? So that's what social commerce is all about. And as our platforms keep maturing and maturing, you're gonna see social take off as a platform for doing digital transactions. So even what we're seeing right now, you're talking about, oh, people are making all this money on Instagram, or oh, these guys are doing so much money on Facebook. I'm telling you, this is just the beginning. This is the early adoption of the curve. It really is. If you go to places like India right now, less than 10% of the people have desktops. However, 90% of the people have mobile phones. So what's happening in emerging markets like India, China, Africa, 
They're leapfrogging over the technology that we're using today. Why are they leapfrogging? Simply because they can't get to, you know, having laptops and all that crap, but everybody's gonna have this. Everybody already has it, and now all we're really looking for is putting a button in front of them. And these guys are gonna wanna know. One of the cool things that, that allow me to go around the world teaching commerce is simply because I come from the first world of commerce, which is America, right? So that's been an advantage for me simply because you're able to teach, and, and not just for me, it's gonna be advantage for you. Simply being able to teach your experience here in this first world country of commerce, going to in not even third world countries. I go to Australia and their uh, maturity is not the same as it is here in America. So you get to bring your message to an entire world. I don't want you to think about, you know, just your neighborhood because that's, that's not big enough. I don't want you to think even about just your country. That's not big enough because what happens here in our country, if you just focus in on the, the commerce in America, all of a sudden it gets extremely noisy. There's all kind of people teaching the same thing. You're constantly flooded with information and request for you to buy their beans, right? But when you go worldwide, what happens is you become extremely unique. It'll give you a swath of opportunity that you will be able to push your messaging into because people around the world are available to you right inside of those social channels. It's available to you for them to get into your world. We have to come together to do that commerce. There has to be a left side and a right side. So what you wanna initially think about is how your messaging can be carried, not just locally, but internationally. That's the whole game that we're gonna play. We're gonna position ourselves as the expert and that just makes people, you know, wanna listen to you. As soon as I start speaking in, let's say somewhere like Australia or Singapore, they hear the American accent and they immediately think, I know more than the guy that's next to him. What is that? Why does that happen? Well, it's kind of an old, old saying that a man in his own house is not respected, not the way they are respected in other houses, right? Some, it, it, it's, it's kind of psychological. It's, it's what your family kind of does to you, right? Sometimes you're like, hey, I got a great idea. You tell them so many great ideas, they don't even value it anymore, right? But you walk outside the door and start talking to your neighbor and he's like, dude, you're so brilliant, you know, but your wife or your husband be like, dude, will you shut up, right? So that is partially how we will help you set it up so that you are differentiated because you're not just talking to the people in your own house because it's noisy in your house. Everybody got an idea. Everybody's doing what they're doing. But when you go outside, people want to sit and sit and listen. Community starts with commerce. Community starts with commerce. Once I start talking about the bean, talking to the bean farmer, he starts asking me about my corn. We go back and forth. Suddenly we have a relationship that didn't exist before. We're simply doing commerce. So commerce builds community. Community requires commerce. I really think community requires commerce. So in essence, in your 36 days to freedom, we're going to identify who your audience is, why they're important, who the avatar is to speak to. If you're speaking to somebody in a, another country versus speaking, um, speaking messaging here in the U.S., how do you position that and why you want to do it? But just start thinking about how commerce is worldwide and not just in your home, in your backyard here in America. There's so much opportunity around the world. Don't compare what you're doing to the guy right next to you that's only trying to get his message out to the United States or to your state. We're gonna go worldwide. All right, for now, I'm out of here. 36 days to freedom, baby. Peace.